yields to order. Madam Secretary, would you call the roll, please? Danilo Russell. It's Donato. 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 No E's in there, Donato, or just Don is fine. Okay. You're here, I take it. <laughs> yes. Dave Bishton, Jerry Boone, Carl Weaver. Yes. Tom Martinez. Jonathan, would you prefer Jonathan or John? Uh, John's fine. John. Andy Elmer. I'm here. With that, I'd like to call for uh, any additions, comments, or corrections with respect to the meeting minutes of August of 2019. Has it been that long since we've sat as a board? Seems like we had a meeting at the first of this year around then, but uh, no. Does anyone have any additions, comments, or corrections to uh, the meeting minutes of August the 19th? Those of you that have had a, a, a chance to look at them. For once, I see nothing that I have to say about the forgotten if I did. Could we get a motion and a second? Yes, I was just about to do that. Okay. I move that we accept the minutes. Second. Please. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. There we go. I would like to, uh, at this time, we call Mr. Blas Hernandez, Chief Building Official for the City of Longmont, to uh, the stand to uh, present the uh, city's case with respect to the National Electrical Code. Mr. Hernandez, would you proceed, please? We can't hear you again, Blas. Welcome to our meeting and thank you, Donato. Um, the, uh, the purpose of the meeting tonight is to inform you of our plan to adopt the 2020 NEC. This code has already been adopted by various cities around us. I don't know how many, but I'm pretty sure a lot of them have already adopted these. As a home rule, we don't necessarily have to adopt it, but we choose to because Longmont uh, has a tradition of adopting the most current codes for our use. So that would include the 2020 NEC and later uh, this year, or, or I, I should say later next year, we do plan to adopt the ICC family of codes, which are the 2021 um additions which uh will be a lot of fun and uh we look forward to adopting those uh next year but that's for a later time tonight what i would like to do is have our uh, electrical expert master electrician matt go over some of the main items that uh, we want to inform you about in the NEC, uh, and I want to start with the actual amendments that we want to include into the NEC. Um, you have, a, I sent you a copy of the existing amendments. Those are going to stay in place. We're not gonna, we're not gonna change those. However, we do want to add a few more amendments that Matt will go over and discuss. And then when Matt is done, uh, discussing these or explaining these, you guys will have an opportunity to ask questions or uh, any concerns that you might have regarding the NEC adoption. Uh, the adoption process does require a public hearing, but I found out that the contractors and the public just don't get too excited about the uh, NEC adoptions. 
I haven't had any calls, questions, concerns. We had we made this uh, meeting available to anyone who wanted to listen. I don't think we got it, uh, except for one person that did call Linda. I haven't had anybody uh, ex express any interest in this meeting. So hopefully this will be a fairly cut and dry process. With that, I would like uh, Matt to uh, explain the new amendments that uh, we are trying to adopt. Thank you, Blas. Um So, Don, if you could pull up the new amendments that were also attached to the memo. So, um, after discussing with our myself and two other um, of our electrical inspectors, we decided to add essentially three of these amendments to the code. Um, I'm sorry, you wanted me uh, to bring up the amendments? The new amendments. Proposed new amendments. All right, there we go. Right, um, so the first one is this: uh, we're going to remove and replace some existing code text. Um, and one of the reasons we want to revise this is to correlate with the most recent Longmont Power and Communications construction specifications. Um, they wanted to make sure that we have a service disconnecting means on the outside of each building so that in the case of a fire or other emergency, they can easily de-energize the building. Um, and so we, we did that by changing the language in Article 230 um, and actually adding in A1 location, the service disconnecting means shall be installed at a readily accessible location on the outside of a building or structure as described below um, on one or two family homes, um, the different communities shall be located in line with the utility ground box or transformer and accessible by the utility. Um, the service can means shall be accessible by the utility on non-dwelling units as well. And we, I did add the exception in there for fire pumps. Um, fire pumps don't necessarily need a disconnecting means. And so that one does not have to be on the outside. And then the second one, um, the bathroom lighting outlets, we wanted to add that at, that into the GOCI protection requirements for single, um, for single family and um, commercial. GOCI protection shall be provided for lighting outlets installed on walls and switches within a zone measured three feet horizontally and eight feet vertically from the wall to the top of the bathroom rib or shower stall threshold. So that's basically so that if you are in the shower, you reach over, turn the light on, you don't get shocked. So trip a GFI instead of shocking you. And then the third one, we've had multiple problems with this um, on inspections, um, specific, specifically on roofs. Um, the receptacles outside mounted the outside of the building shall have a vertical clearance, not less than 12 inches from final grade, roof surface, or similar location. We've had some problems where we go to do an inspection and the receptacle is under snow. And so we decided to add that in there to make sure that the receptacles are sitting at least above a 12 inch snow load. Any questions on that? Don, can you unmute yourself? I, I don't have a question on any of them, Matt. I, I would just point out the sort of the obvious, you're making notes on basically all of these, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily see the receptacle outside unless they made a, a particular note of it. It'd be easy to miss that if you were doing a review, but like the, uh, the service disconnect when you're doing your commercial reviews, if, if you saw it like just inside, you would you'd catch that and put that outside and mission accomplished, then it would be on the plan. So therefore you wouldn't have necessarily somebody with something to complain about, you know what I mean? Yeah, I I don't really have any questions or 
or issues with any of those three. It's just the whole, you got to warn them or they yell at you. <laughs> yep. All right, no other questions, we can go on to the um, significant changes of the NEC. Do we need to move to do that? I'd second that. Let's call that a motion and I'll second that. Matt can't make motions. He's not a board member. I would be happy to move that we approve the uh, amendments to the uh, 2020 NEC as uh, presented by uh, the building. Do I have a second? I second. second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed? Aye. No, sorry, not opposed. I was late to the party on that one. <laughs> Let the minutes show that uh, no one opposed the uh, amendments. Now you want to review, Matt, you want to review the changes now? Yeah, you could bring up the 2020 NEC changes. So this list I made because we didn't quite get to go to class our classes that we originally had scheduled. I actually went through the code book page by page and put together this. Um, and the highlighted ones are stuff that will really affect our day to day operations, something that will run into constantly. And then the other ones are kind of stuff that um, stuff more for the occasional situation and um, our electrical inspectors really need to know. So the first big one is the, the GSI protection required in all circuits on 125 volts to 250 volts. But previously, it was only 120 volts where the GSI had never protected, but now even your two pole, um, 240 volt amperi uh, receptacles need to be GSI protected. So such thing as a car charger in the garage will now have to be GSI protected. Um, the next one is on all receptacles and basements need to be GFI protected. That's finished and unfinished. And that's due to mostly because of flood areas cause that change. Um, the next one, GFI protection required in laundry and bathroom sink areas and other than dwelling units. It's always been required in dwelling units for laundry areas. They decided to add in commercial spaces where they have laundry areas now that and bathroom sinks they have to be gfi protected and the next highlighted one um requires a switch at entry to attics crawl spaces user rooms and basements so previously they didn't require a light in the attic or some other space if it didn't have equipment now requiring that it does have a light in those um, and then this is uh, this is a big one all services supplying dwelling units should have provided the surge protection device. The, the code specifically states that that is including service changes. So if somebody goes to upgrade their service or change their panel out, they will have to add a surge protection device. And I don't... Um, in the 314.16, the ground wires above four wires, that's will be important again for us electrical inspectors and the electricians because it reduces the amount of wires you can fit into an electrical box. Um, 4069C is what started us on getting the light, bathroom light in there as well, that the receptacles cannot be within three feet horizontally from a bath or shower. So as of right now, there's a lot of contractors who are putting a receptacle just outside the bathroom area and now, or the bathtub area, so now they have to be a minimum three feet away from the bathtub. And um, almost every code change, they add requirements for tamper resistant receptacles and um, there's adding to garages, accessory dwelling units, and 
are essentially buildings to dual units, common areas of multifamilies, motels, and their common areas, dormitory, and assist living facilities. Uh, the next one adds sump pumps, dishwashers, cord and pressure, cord and plug, connected high pressure washing machines, and body fill stations to appliances that need GFI protection. This was just, they just added more specific appliances that require GFI protections that aren't included in 210.8, the general GFI area. Um, and then the last one I highlighted mostly because we do have some hospitals and things that are being built. Um, they require separation of life safety branch circuits from regular branch circuits so you don't get any um, electromagnetic frequency disturbance or um, anything like that. So 706 um, is there's revised requirements for ESS, which is um, elect, electric storage systems. So that would be batteries to include, you know, mostly with uh, solar panels and such. And there, in there, there was, it was a lot of nomenclature changes and that's really about it. Um, the next one allows for fire alarm distinct means to be secured in the on position. So previously you weren't allowed by code to put a lock on the fire alarm panel circuit breaker or over curtain protection device to keep it on. You just had to put a sticker on that says it don't turn off. So now the new code allows you to actually lock that uh, fire alarm panel in the on position. And um, Article 800 is they're slowly moving into the NEC slowly moving into requiring low voltage systems to be um, inspected by us, and this and that's just one more step toward there. Um, what I've been told that last year's International Association of Electrical Inspector meeting is that they hope to start requiring low voltage to be inspected um, by 2024. What's the virtue of that, Matt? Um, the, a lot of lighting systems are going low voltage. And so it's gotten to the point where if you're not inspecting and going by requirements of the NEC for low voltage wiring, you're not really looking at the lighting wiring anymore. It goes to a box somewhere in the building. And then from there on, it's all low voltage wiring from a lighting control panel. And so at this point, we're not really looking at the wiring to um, lights in especially commercial spaces. That and with all the, you know, updated technology and all the data lines we have to look at, we're going to start looking more and more at, you know, even Ethernet cable requirement, a lot of communication. <clears throat> How much of this is going to be applicable to uh, additions and remodels? Uh, addition remodels, uh, the GFI requirements at the beginning. So any added 240 volt receptacles will need to be, if it's a finished basement, and now the finished basements, as they're adding in receptacles, those will require those to be GFI protected. Um, and even if they had any exterior outlets, including the air conditioner, they'll have to be GFI protected. And then obviously if they do a bathroom and all that stuff, though, that will also be added into the where, for the three foot minimum and the wall, and the wall switch. For a, for a new, for a new restroom, for a new bathroom, but not for yes. one of an existing one, cutting up the Correct. walls and putting in the... If they cut up the, if they tear down the walls and open up the entire walls, we will require them to move it. Not opening up the walls. Okay, if they're not opening walls, then no. If it's, if it's cost prohibitive and if they're not working, doing, if the extent of the work isn't that much, we wouldn't make them change it. That'd be grandfathered in. You know, obviously there's quite a bit of cost with all this extra ground fault. Uh -huh. Yeah, the ground fault and the surge protection device on service changes is going to be an extra cost. Yeah, they, they, but I completely agree with that. There's a bunch in there I wouldn't want to see just because of the constant extra cost. Then they wonder why these houses are so expensive. But at the end of the day, um, we're not really – we're just adopting what somebody else has already decided. I mean, the state has decided, and by and large, as much as possible, we need uniformity. That doesn't mean that I don't support the amendment changes. 
but you want an electrician who's licensed across the state to be able to show up in any individual jurisdiction and know what he's supposed to do and uh, and not be overly surprised. And again, that's why the plans, you know, take care of what's expected on that, that review. Um, so, I mean, just because I don't like it doesn't mean that I, I wouldn't vote for it. It's decided by the state. There's a bunch of stuff in regards to, say, state licensing that I don't care for, particularly with the plumbing part, but it is what it is. Don, you're muted still. Mr. Hernandez, do you have anything to add or uh, no, I, I, thought, comments? I, I can see Carrie's face every once in a while. Carrie, I think, came in late. Carrie works for LPC. Carrie, can you introduce yourself and tell the board members what you do? You're muted, Carrie. You're muted. I'm okay. I didn't. I couldn't hear that. My, I, uh, I don't know if you guys heard that. No. Gary, do you have your microphone on? Yeah, I think you do. Trying to get to a quiet or atmosphere. Um, I'm Carrie Spock. I work for Longmont Power and Communications. I'm the elected meter shop supervisor. Carrie, I'm just uh, this with my phone. So yes, you know, my obviously. Phone is really tiny. She's, her name is Carrie Spots, and she works for Longmont Power Communications. She is the electric metering supervisor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, so I guess at this point, uh, I want to uh, ask the board members if they have, if you guys uh, can approve these changes to the NEC because if you guys are okay with this, our next step would be to move to city council for them to approve it. Um, this this is a little unusual because in other cities, they don't go through the boards to approve them. We just have to have public hearings to, uh, to uh, uh, announce the changes to the contractors if they're interested. But I believe the, the way this is set up, the master board does have to review these amendments and changes and then approve those before we could move on to the city council at least that's that's what it was that's what was explained to me so um if you guys have any more questions i i would ask that you guys would consider these changes for approval i thought we did i thought we did approve them you guys have to vote on them though right we did Am I missing something? We vote on something else. We, uh, last I thought we approved them. A motion was brought forward and seconded to approve the amendments to the 2020. Okay, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I must have not been paying attention. That's all, that, that's all we're asking for. And I see Jerry is on board now. Hi, Jerry. How are you doing? Can't hear you, Jerry. You're muted, this, uh, Jerry. Jerry, you need to unmute. I believe that uh, uh, Zoom has a facility that if you set it, that when you speak, it automatically unmutes you. Does X have such a facility if we're going to use this tool? I like I like Zoom, but for some reason the city wanted us to use WebEx. Linda, well, I don't know why why that is. In uh, in Zoom, you can set a I have a setting, and whenever somebody starts speaking, they're automatically unmuted. And some people may not like that, but I happen to. Anyway, hi Jerry, how are you? Hi, fine. Sorry, I'm late. I had a conflict. 
Hey, Jerry, do you mind introducing yourself? We have some new board members. I just want to make sure everyone uh, knows who you are and what you do. Um, I'm Jerry Boone, and I'm a retired structural engineer. Congratulations on retirement. Yeah, it's great. If only I had somewhere to go and something to do. You know? Uh, Don, I don't have it. I don't have any more for the board to uh, to review. This was this was what uh, this was all I wanted to present for now, and so uh, unless so there's any other. Any other business? I'm. I'm. This is. This is what I. Linda, go ahead. I just have one comment, and I. I could be wrong, but I know we. Um, made an, uh, we ad approved the amendments, but we are adopting a, a new version of the code. So would oh, we like to make amendment or a, a motions to adopt the 2020. National Electric Code since we've been on the 2017. I understand. I'm sorry. I, 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 I thought that was all we were going to uh, act on this evening was the uh, amendments, but we can't amendments unless we approve the code now, can we? Yeah. So I need a motion to approve the 2020 National Electrical Code. I move. The I move that we accept the 2020 NEC changes. Second, the motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you. I was going to call for uh, uh, discussion from the public, but it appears that there's no one from the public present. Let the minutes show. New business before the board. Uh, Madam Secretary, you had some uh, new business or you had some things with respect to nomination of new officers? Well, I don't know. You guys discuss it. Um, we are one, you know, two months away from January. Do we want to? No. That. I mean, I don't know if you want to do that vote for a possible two meetings. There are several members that uh, Nope, you moved. You're muted, Don. Don, I, I think he was making the point. He's using Zoom for years, you know, you just ah, Sorry. Uh, Anyway, so um, there are several board members, including myself, whose terms expire at the end of this year. And that's, yep. we should wait until next year. I assume that we'll be having meetings more regularly than we have been, <clears throat> at least for a period of time to discuss the uh, new IEC, IBC. Yes. So out of the three of you members, have you decided if you're going to um, just curious so that we might know if you're going to uh, reapply to the board? That would be Don, Dave, who's not here, and Jerry. Um, I'm stepping down. I'm not reapplying. All right. Okay. Good to know. I think I, I think I reapplied. Great. Okay. I delivered, I delivered uh, my uh, write up to uh, the city clerk's office yesterday and knocked on the door, and somebody came and I presented it to them. And from there, I have no knowledge, but I did uh, uh, request to continue. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah. That's all I have. I'm sorry, oh, Don, go ahead. No, I was just going to say other other new business or comments from board members. 
Yeah, kind of a question, uh, Blas. Uh, so when we do the adoption of the larger amendments, um, that's, you know, it's like 80 sheets or something like that. Is there a, an efficient way that we have in mind? I mean, boards would be great if we have an individual uh, code question, right? That's what they're kind of inherently kind of designed for. But to, to go through all those amendments, um, how is it that that, that works? Because if we were doing that in this kind of format, my gosh, we'd all be a thousand by the time we got through it. We uh, The last time we approved the amendments in the code, we took it as a lump approval. We discussed them all and approved them, as I recall, Linda, correct me if I'm wrong, but we approved them all in a single motion. Yeah, that's what we ended up doing. We There was discussion on, okay, let's part it out to this and this and this, but there were so many. I think we we reviewed them all, or you all did, and then made one big blast of a motion. Yes, I think, oops, hold on. Would, would okay. it work well so, to, uh, if, if they were disseminated, obviously they'll be disseminated in advance. If we uh, put out group emails to each other, just with, you know, you know you're probably not gonna have comments on the vast majority of things, but there might be, let's say one out of five things you have a, either a concern about, a question about, or something of that nature, but a, with sort of a broadcast email work. It has to be discussed on the record, Andy. It can't be discussed solely between members. Gotcha. I, so even, even though all members would be involved on the email chat, it has to be in a, in a meeting forum. Which is Public stuff. record. You know, uh, Andrew, I, I just wanted to let you know that this this amendment, these amendments, I didn't give you much notice, and I apologize. We were kind of in a crunch, and uh, we spent too much time waiting for training, and then it never happened. So we were kind of delayed on this, so I apologize. But I guarantee you, when you guys see those amendments for the building code and, and the others, I'm going to give you plenty of time to look at these things. I'm going to give you at least a month, if more, you, you can, you know, because it takes time to read them and understand them. So I, I will get, I will send those out to you so that you can read them, formulate your questions. And then when we have our meeting, hopefully we can manage the questions in an efficient manner in a public setting, public hearing, like uh, Don mentioned. So, uh, I mean, I don't know how to make it shorter or run faster, and it is difficult to do it on a video conference like this. I, I, I yeah. agree with I agree with you. It's it's going to be not fun, uh, but we have to do it. And so, the best I can do is send send all of the amendments as we propose, give you guys a chance to read them, and then go from there. When we go to our meeting, hopefully we can answer the questions you guys have and then proceed from there. Other comments or new business uh, from the board? I believe we decided to uh, see who gets reappointed and what new members may be coming in and then look for uh, uh, installation of new officers after the first of the year. I assume we will be having, will we be having, uh, do, do you know, Bloss, if we'll be having a December meeting where we'll be ready to start discussing in December the next meeting? Um, I don't, I don't plan to have a meeting in December unless you guys want one. Well, if you're, if we're ready to start discussing the codes, then it would be January. Right. I, I think, uh, well, the, the building codes, we, we do have the build, the building codes are available, the new ones, yes. and, and uh, but the changes have not been published yet. Uh, so the changes are nice because then we know exactly what those new uh, changes are, but those are not available at this time. So it'll be sometime next year. Thank you, boss. Any other new business or comments from members of the board? Mr. Lemelin, glad to have you aboard. Mr. Rivas, thank you for meeting, coming tonight. Ms. Beam, good to see you. 
Even it appears that this will be the last time that we see you. Yeah, possibly so. Good luck. Andy, always good to see, always good to see you. Thank you all for uh, attending the meeting. I appreciate it. Uh, as always, we look to you for guidance and uh, your your approval means a lot to us. Uh, the next one is gonna take a little more time. So I'm just hoping, I hope it goes smooth, smoothly. And uh, you, if I don't hear from you guys between now and next year, have a happy holidays and uh, stay safe out there. We'll probably hear from me. I'm always in trouble with building inspection on one thing or another, Blas. But uh, um, I uh, guess I would call for a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, adjourn this meeting of November the 4th, 2020 of the City of Longmont, Master Board of Appeals. Do I have a second? I second. All those in favor, aye. Say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thanks everybody for coming. Thank you very much. You. Yes, sir. Thanks, Matt. Have a good night, everybody.